few weeks ago, I showed off the B-Link ME Mini, a super tiny, low power mini PC that can handle six NVMe drives. My conclusion was that it's a great device for the price at around $300, but a lot of you shared two common concerns, no SATA ports and no 10 gig networking. Well, I fixed that. With a little ingenuity and a fistful of jank, we now have an N150 based NAS that can house four NVMe drives, six SATA drives, and has full fat 10 gig networking. So let's take a look at it and see what we got, shall we? Okay, let's back up a little bit. If you haven't watched the original video on the ME Mini, I recommend to check that out. But the gist was that, yes, it has six NVMe slots, but five of those are limited to Gen 3 by one speeds. And the last one is Gen 3 by two. So one gigabyte and two gigabytes per second, respectively. This means that we are sitting in this weird area where the NVMe drives are too fast for the PCIe slots. And then the networking isn't even enough to keep up with those PCIe slots. To help alleviate this, we could simply add 10 gig networking to match those PCIe speeds and also add SATA ports to avoid some of that storage bottleneck. But how? I'm sure you've seen enough B-roll to guess how I did this, but this is YouTube, so I'm gonna talk for a couple more minutes and stroke my ego. So the first step was tackling the 10 gig networking. Fortunately, there exists an adapter that converts an M.2 NVMe slot to a 10 gig NIC. Boom, done, right? Not quite. You may notice that we don't really have any space inside this chassis to fit anything other than an NVMe drive. And as you can see, the 10 gig adapter not only has a heatsink, but also requires the actual RJ45 port on the separate card. That meant it was time for some 3D printing, baby. Luckily, the RJ45 part has a few mounting holes that make it pretty easy to design something to hold it. The second part is that we need to relocate the actual NVMe connection since it doesn't fit in the chassis. I picked up one of these M.2 extenders and well, it works, but you'll see in a bit why I probably should have went with the 30 centimeter version instead of the 20 centimeter. Oh, and the last weird thing we have is that the NVMe slots on the ME Mini are actually backwards. So if you're thinking, Brett, just run the NAS without the cover on it, duh. You actually can't. Since the top of the NVMe card faces the internal heatsink, you can't fit it even without the cover. So I went ahead and installed the 10 gig card in slot four, which is our gen three by two slot, giving us full 10 gigabit per second to work with. Next, I had to tackle the SATA part. Similar to before, we just snagged an NVMe M.2 to SATA adapter and another extension. I initially put this one in slot six because I figured it doesn't matter since the rest of the slots are all gen three by one, but apparently it does matter. Whenever I did this, nothing would work. Like no 10 gig, no SATA, and even the onboard networking was acting funky. But before giving up, I figured why not just try another slot and moved it to slot five. And well, considering that this video exists, that worked. Don't ask me why, I have no idea, but there you go. I then populated the rest of the NVMe slots with two one terabyte and two 512 gigabyte drives, fully expecting one or all of them to just not be detected at all. However, to my surprise upon loading up TrueNAS, I had proper networking, all six SATA drives were detected and all four NVMe drives were there as well. I was shocked. Now that everything was detected, I had to figure out how to put everything together to make it look uh, less shitty. This is the design I went with, which I think looks pretty neat, and that's obviously subjective, but what it lacks in precision and class, it uh, doesn't really make up for in functionality. There's some issues there too. I wanted a design that made it easy to just drop the device in or take it out, so I went with this little section with some short walls to keep the ME Mini from sliding around, and the SATA drives would sit next to that. I put the 10 gig at the bottom here because I also wanted the amount of SATA drives you can use to be flexible. So each little two and a half inch SATA drive caddy is printed individually and glued on top of each other. So technically this should work with one, six, 12, 100 drives. And after doing a test fit, I glued everything together and stuck it on. The next struggle was getting those NVMe extension ribbons from the inside shell to the outside where they can actually connect to their counterparts. Here is where you can see why I should have gotten the 30 centimeter ones. I initially decided to Dremel a slit in the rear of the shell, but after doing this, I realized the ribbons weren't long enough to pass through them before sliding the shell on. So I Dremeled another slot in the side. Look at that beautiful craftsmanship. I know. Bonus points to anybody who remembers this little guy. Luckily, this was barely enough to get the ribbons through and also barely enough to reach the extension cards. And I mean, barely. I mounted them onto a piece of plastic that was glued onto the top of the SATA tower, and it was a struggle to get them plugged in. However, we persisted, and against all odds, we got everything wired up. 
At this point, some of you are probably wondering how I'm powering all of these SATA drives. I mean, it's not like this thing has a proper ATX power supply with SATA connectors or anything. Well, that's where this um, janky ass solution comes in. I got an adapter that converts two USB type A ports to six SATA power connectors. Theoretically, each USB port should do five volts at two amps. So we're looking at five volts at four amps or 20 watts. Not gonna lie, I was shocked when this worked too. Kind of a common theme of this video, just being shocked that any of this worked. So there it is. We have our final build and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love it. Of course, I'll leave a link to all the 3D print files down in the description below if you wanna do something like this. Now obviously it'll work as is, but there are a few changes that I'd recommend. One is putting screw holes to mount the SATA caddies together and to the base because it's, uh, well, we can't really get to it anymore without breaking something because they're all glued together. Two is that I'd make a channel for this USB extension slash power cable to run because it's a pretty tight fit between the device and the SATA drives. And three is to possibly add screw holes to the bottom to secure the ME mini to the base. I don't know, all of these are just suggestions. Or if you're not a 3D design noob like me, you could just print a whole ass shell for the ME mini and do whatever you want with it. All right, so yeah, that's kind of cool, but was it even worth it? How does it all perform? Well, you'll be happy to know that our 10 gig card is giving us that full fat 10 gig, so check that box off. And for the SATA drives, I wanted to test both the actual throughput to the drives, as well as what it can realistically do across the network. I created a six drive RAID Z1 pool, which is close to what you'd realistically do with these drives. And when I transferred a single large file to the pool across the 10 gig connection, we were seeing speeds of around 500 megabytes per second. In actual throughput to the drives, we are getting about 1.6 gigabytes per second in sequential reads. Wait, what? Isn't the SATA controller limited to just a single lane of PCIe Gen 3, which is one gigabyte per second? Yeah, I thought so, but when I went to check the link speeds myself using LSPCI, under a 10 gig card, I could see that we were getting the two expected PCIe lanes. But when I went to the SATA controller, I was also seeing two. And I can't explain this. I legitimately can't. I don't know how it's doing that, but cool, faster speeds. I tried to retest over the network with a single file and got around 500 to 600 megabytes per second, which is pretty reasonable given you're using SMB. The last thing we need to check is that how all of this affected power draw. Before when it was just running three NVMe drives in here, we were sitting at around eight watts. But now with 10 gig networking, six SATA drives and four NVMe drives, we're at 15 watts, which is still wild. Imagine loading this thing up with a couple of four terabyte NVMe drives and six eight terabyte SATA SSDs, and it being that power efficient. But at the end of the day, what did we accomplish here? Well, I got to satisfy a bunch of random strangers on the internet, and also ended up with a pretty cool little system here, so pretty solid day. Realistically, I think we got to see how versatile PCIe actually is, where we got to add so much functionality to this low power device without making any real sacrifices. What do you think? Anything you would have done differently? Let me know down in the comments. Also tag me on Twitter if you end up doing anything like this yourself and it'd actually be pretty cool to see what some of you come up with, but just do it better, I guess. But that's all for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like and subscribe if you wanna see more janky 3D home lab print stuff. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my PCIe extenders at gen five speeds with four lanes and not quite enough cable. Y'all are long. And if you're still watching, you're a Dremel. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.